Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the meeting. I'm not seeing a, a bunch of new attendees joining anymore. So hopefully this is the, this is, uh, we've got everybody that should be attending. Uh, I'm Jen Santos, Deputy Director for Parks, and I would like to introduce a few more folks. We have Travis Birding joining us, uh, as well as um, we have our virtual meeting hosts, uh, Emily Ander and Mary Lou Nichols, and they will be helping us uh, facilitate the meeting, helping during question and answer periods, and, and otherwise be running the meeting behind the scenes. I wanted to thank you all so much for being here. I know we all have very busy schedules and I, I really appreciate you all being able to attend this really important meeting uh, during COVID. And uh, this is the best way we can meet and I'm super excited to see uh, the amount of attendees we have here. Um, I wanted to um, ask for your patience as we move this virtual meeting. Uh, this is the first community virtual meeting we'll be hosting as a team here. So uh, bear with us as we go forward. Uh, when uh, we get to our question and answer period later there, if, if you do have questions and answers, uh, know there'll be just a, a few moments there where there's a transition where it may appear that you're losing connection, but you're not. Stay tuned. You'll be, it's just switching you so that you can be able to speak. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and read some of the basic things to get us started in the meeting. Uh, so members of the public joining this meeting will have their microphones muted. If you're phoning in to join the meeting and you choose to speak during the question and answer period and public input portion of the meeting, for privacy concerns, the host will rename you to caller and only show the last four digits of your phone number. Additionally, the city of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption and will not tolerate hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to particip participate respectfully or if necessary, the meeting will end immediately. Madam Host, will you please explain how the public comments will be heard at today's meeting? Yes, Madam Facilitator. At the end of the presentation, the facilitator will open the floor for questions and answers and public comments. The host will lower all hands until the public comments item is open. Once the facilitator has called for public comment, the facilitator will ask the public to raise their hand if they wish to speak. Those joining by phone may dial star nine to raise your hand. The host will then call on those who have raised their hands. The host will unmute your microphone for your comment and then will mute you once you are finished speaking. A courtesy timer will appear while you ask your question or make your comment. The panel will respond to each question or comment as it is raised. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based upon the response you've received. There is also the opportunity to ask questions throughout the presentation by clicking the Q&A feature in your Zoom toolbar and typing in your question. The host will keep an eye on these questions and will answer them in writing as time allows or will ask the presenters to answer them live at intervals throughout the presentation. Any questions not answered during the presentation will be addressed during the questions and public comment periods during the presentation. Now I'll turn it back to Jen to begin the presentation. Thank you, Madam Host. Um, so let's go ahead and start the presentation. Uh, we are here to talk about Creekside renaming. And I mentioned Travis Birding earlier. He is one of our panelists here tonight as he has requested that o Creekside Open Space Park uh, name be changed to Mary M. Traverso Open Space Park. So today we're gonna go over uh, just uh, obviously our welcome and meeting overview, the renaming proposal itself, uh, a bit of a park system overview to talk about uh, the open space, uh, we'll talk specifically about what is Creekside Open Space, and we will also go over a bit of the policy and procedure. We have several community polls, which is a really exciting feature. Uh, it allows us to look at your responses live together, so I'm looking forward to that. Next slide, please. So we'll go over a little bit of the history here. Um, in early 2018, Travis 
Birding brought forth a request to rename Creekside open space to Mary M. Traverso Park. Uh, Mr. Birding presented his request to the Board of Community Services and provided a letter of support for his request uh, in 2018. Uh, the Board of Community Services discussed Mr. Birding's request um, the next month and asked staff to explore multiple, multiple scenarios of how to proceed with this request. Um, Staff had planned to return back to the Board of Community Services, but we had a uh, fire season upon us. We also had the Paradise Fire Smoke, if some of you may recall. Um, we also had some key staff members that were working on this project retire. Um, so we had a little bit of disruption there and we got back on board when we had some new staff in 2019 and reported back to the Board of Community Services regarding our findings uh, for this request. And one of the things that was asked by the Board of Community Services is to seek uh, community input. And so that's why we're here tonight, to seek your input on the request to change the name. Next slide, please. So right now I am going to introduce you to Mr. Birding. He's the requester requesting that this open space park be uh, renamed to Mary M. Traverso, and he'll give you some of the background about why he's asking for this request. Mr. Birding. Hi, Jen. Thank you. Um, and thank you, everyone. Um, well, first, my name is Travis Birding. Um, Mary uh, was my mother-in-law, um, and my lovely wife was uh, is the daughter of, of uh, Mary. She's here for support. Also, rub my back. So, um, but I want to, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank a few people and a few groups. I want to first thank the, the Board of Community Service for um, taking on this renaming and proceeding forward with it and, and, and get us to where we are today and putting together this meeting. So thank you so much for putting that together and, and, uh, and, and so forth. Um, the next person I'd like to thank is Amy Grant. She's the one that helped me get started with this process. Um, she is now retired, so she helped me get from plan A to plan B. And also got me in front of the board to uh, get this going. And then Emily, who is, who is on here too, I want to thank you for picking up where Lisa left off and getting us close to the finish line, so thank you for that. And then lastly, I want to thank everyone on this call, uh, almost 30 some people on here from, you know, from local all the way from Florida, Mary's brother, Arkansas, Arizona, and I can and see uh, LA too. So um, thank you for your support, for joining, for being here. Um, it really shows um, what Mary was and what this, what this renaming means to everybody and the community. So um, thank you. So yeah, like it was mentioned in the previous slide, uh, two and a half years ago, um, I presented this renaming to the board um, in, in honoring Mary. Um, Mary started up this pro, um, well, about 15 years ago, and a group of neighbors all decided to get within the community to help clean the parks, the medians, everywhere you could possibly see within this community, um, and which started uh, Bennett Valley Vision, um, Pat Mai, um, who, bought, who might be on this call, also was one of those people that helped out uh, create this group. This group has been around for about 15 years. They still go today. Um, she, Mary was one of the co-founders and the leaders of this group um, that would help, you know, clean up the parks. Creekside Park is one of them. Um, and I think they'd go out there every, every month or so, clean it up, uh, mow, the mow the lawn. Um, I remember Bill, um, Mary's husband, Alexis's uh, dad, driving the John Deere three, <laughs> three blocks down just to, to mow the high grass. The high grass is probably the size of the kitchen table I'm on, but still. Uh, the dedication that they had for this project, for this park, for everyone around, um, meant a lot for everybody. And when Mary passed uh, about four and a half years ago, the goal was to get this park renamed because it was close to the house. And this is a park that she near and dear held to her heart. In fact, in a slide you'll later see is some bird, bird houses that Mary really and truly loved. So you'll see that. I hope it's still on that slide. So I hope you guys didn't change anything. But, um, but 
But what Mary, what Mary did was um, bring a group together, bring a community together and a neighbors too. And, um, it, in, and this Bennett Valley vision has done a lot for it. What this park means is yes, it's, it is to honor Mary, but it is also to recognize uh, this group and the volunteers that still are there today and still working hard. So I wanna, you know, it, it's part of a group effort. Um, and, but Mary meant a lot to all of us, as you can see, um, and it still goes on today. So this is a big reason why we are here today. So, you know, I, I'm, I appreciate it. I thank you, we're getting close and um, I'm looking forward to uh, getting this passed and, um, you know, ultimately thank you so much. And uh, yeah, that's, that's all I have. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Birding. I really appreciate that synopsis. Um, Let's go and continue on with our presentation. Next slide, please. So for this, for this uh, slide, we wanted to kind of give you a perspective, um, um, aerial graphic map of the entire city. And the yellow, the yellow lines you see on there is uh, vertically Highway 101 and mostly horizontally Highway 12. The, the green that you're seeing on there is all City of Santa Rosa parks. And uh, it's broken into quadrants, the Northwest, Southwest, Northeast, Southeast. And of course, our uh, open space park located in the Southeast with the star. Uh, the other thing about this slide to talk about is the pink that you see around here, the boxes, that is the city uh, boundary, just for perspective. So next slide, please. And so for here, we wanted to show you a further distinction of the quadrants. Uh, we, we have a question for you later on in the poll. So we're hoping you can, this will help you understand or pick out where you live here in this in the city and hopefully to tell us, and don't worry if you don't live in the city, there's an option for that as well. Uh, but if you look, this is how the city has you know, organized itself to uh, look at how we distribute uh, funds and attention and things like that for the park system overall. So quadrant one is in the Northwest. And if you live there, you're gonna be living east of Highway 101 and north of Highway 12, um, a place to play, Northwest Community Park, those things are in quadrant one. Quadrant two is in the Southwest, Southwest quadrant and um, uh, we have Rosen Creek Community Park down there, Bear Park, just as reminders, and that is, I hope I'm saying all this right, south of Highway 12 and, and oh, sorry, west. I think I said Highway 1 was east, but everything 1 and 2 is all west of Highway 101. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm taking a little bit of time here just to make sure you can help identify where you live. And the Quadrant 3 is, of course, the northeast, and that would be east of 101 and north of Highway 12. And we've got Rincon Valley Community Park up there, um, Nagasawa, and Quadrant 4 is near our open space park, and that is south of Highway 12 and east of Highway 101. And we've got Galvin Park, um, Bennett Valley Community, or Bennett Valley Golf Course, excuse me. So take note of where you, of what quadrant you think you live in. That will be important for us to understand um, where we're collecting information from. Um, and so let's go ahead, we're going to do the, go into the polling, and we wanted to have an easy poll for you and ask some basic questions so we could all get used to how it works. So I'm going to turn it back over to our host to explain how the polling will work, and then we'll walk through the questions together. Thank you, Madam Facilitator. All the poll questions are single or multiple choice. You must answer all questions in order to submit your responses. The submit button is at the very end of the poll and you may need to scroll down um, to the bottom of your screen to find it. If you are completing the poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you can answer the second question, et cetera. If you are participating in the meeting via a landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. However, the poll will be available via the Creekside Project website for two weeks after the meeting so please check the website um, on Monday uh, to complete the survey. Once everyone has completed the poll 
and it has been closed, the results will appear immediately and the facilitator will walk you through the results. So with that, I'm going to launch to our first poll. Thank you, Madam Host. So um, hopefully that gives you enough information to get started with the polling. Uh, obviously, where do you live? There's that quadrant question with some information to help you, your age. And I think we've got some, uh, how often do you visit? And uh, we really would love to hear from you how you heard about um, tonight's meeting so that we can make sure we're um, understanding where all that's coming from. So I let you go through that there. So um, Northwest Quadrant, north of Highway 12 and west of 101, Northeast Quadrant, north of Highway 12 and east of Highway 101. Southwest Quadrant, south of Highway 12 and west of 101. And our Southeast Quadrant where uh, the open space is located, south of Highway 12 and east of Highway 101. I'm going to give a little bit more time for voting. Madam Host, how is it looking? Are we getting close to completion? 23 of 31 uh, participants have submitted survey answers. Thank you. Okay, we'll give it one, another minute and then we'll look at the results. Okay, we stabilized at 26, but we just got 27. Uh, okay, are we about ready? Yes, yeah, so we have 20, 28 of 31 reporting. Okay. So I'll go ahead and end the polling and then you'll see the results. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see the results. Uh, where are we living? Uh, we've got um, 10 of us in the Southeast Quadrant and some outside, uh, a mix of age groups and a mix of folks visiting, uh, which is great. Uh, at least once a month is nice to see. And how did you hear about this word of mouth and signs and social media? Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your participation in this. And hopefully that gives you a sense of, of how it's working, um, an, easy, an easy poll. So we'll keep going with our uh, presentation. So here we just wanted to talk about what it means to be an open space park in relation to the other types of park we have in the city. Uh, so you can kind of get a good example there. A community park, an example is uh, Finley Community Park as well as a place to play. Uh, those are just examples of community park. Galvin Park is in the Southeast Quadrant. So examples there, very large park, lots of activities. A neighborhood park is a little bit smaller, uh, different special use recreation centers. And we have 13 open space parks, including Creekside. And open spaces are not entirely limited to um, just being in independent park systems. They can also be part of a larger park system. Um, so if you can look at that, we have a hundred. Uh, we have a thousand and thirty-two acres all over in the park. Next slide, please. Uh, and just to give you a little bit uh, better uh, look at what an open space is, it's really a very passive area. Um, it's uh, minimal improvements with benches, maybe a picnic table, uh, trash cans, trails. Um, it, it's, it's really just a visual or conservation type of area uh, left to be in a natural state. Um, next slide, please. 
And we have a couple examples for us that are visual, like myself. <laughs> um, here's Creekside Open Space as a reminder. Next slide, please. Another example of an open space, Parker Hill open space, very rural. Uh, next slide, please. And Thomas Lake Harris open space, uh, also again, pretty rural with a uh, pathway running through it. Next slide. And so a little bit closer um, view of the aerial of Creekside open space, 3.63 acres uh, adjacent to Matanzas Creek running on one side of it. Uh, it's a long Creekside Road where it gets its name from. And it was dedicated to the city for public use in, on February 17th, 1967. Um, and it is, uh, the Creekside Open Space is a general plan designation. Next slide, please. And so just here's, a, here's another way of looking at the park. Uh, this is talking about the types of amenities that are in the park. Um, there's three benches, trash cans, there's the decorative bird boxes that uh, Mr. Birding was mentioning, dogway stations, adopt a park signs, um, and the developable areas are the places where we have picnic tables and um, walking areas is about one acre. Um, and then we've got Matanzas Creek in the red. And uh, we wanted to point out that um, in the slide on the far right lower, there's a star. Uh, so we can see how close Miss Traverso's uh, home was to the park and how active, uh, to show how active and how often she could be there and was there. Next slide, please. And uh, thank you to Mr. Birding. He did a fantastic job of talking about Bennett Valley Vision. The city operates a wonderful volunteer program and Bennett Valley Vision, which is a little bit hard to see in this sign, it's faded, needs to be updated. Uh, but Bennett, Bennett Valley Vision, of which uh, Ms. Traverso, uh, Mary Traverso was a huge part of, was a founding member. And uh, they, along like other, other volunteer groups in the city, have provided a tremendous amount of volunteerism, cleaning weeds, mowing, uh, making special places like this for uh, wildlife uh, twice a year. The group gets together to, to essentially mow the grass, remove blackberries, and add new mulch, pick up litter, and maintain the bird, box, bird boxes, uh, which were donated and installed by the group. There's a lot of volunteerism uh, that happens at this park. And so we are going to roll into our next community poll uh, just to get a sense of your understanding of Creekside Park. should be a very easy polling. Madam Host, will you facilitate the polling and remind folks how to participate. Yes, Madam Facilitator, I'm going to go over the instructions again. Um, I will for the following two polls as well. Again, all poll questions are going to be single or multiple choice. You must answer all the questions in order to submit your responses. If you're completing the poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you can answer the second question. If you are participating in the meeting via a landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. Once everyone has completed the poll and it has been closed, the results will appear immediately and the facilitator will walk you through the results. Thank you, Madam Host. All right, let's look at Let's look at the polling. So again, a very easy poll. Are you familiar with Creekside Open Space? Um, and have you visited? How often? And have you heard about Bennett Valley Vision? And if you have, have you been lucky enough to participate with Bennett Valley Vision? So we've got, we've got time. So please take your time and fill that out.
we have 30 of 32 people reporting. And that number seems stable, so. Great, thank you. Let's go ahead and look at the results. Okay, wonderful. So lots of folks familiar, that's good since you're attending and lots of visitors and a variety of times for visiting. Um, glad to see the um, knowledge of Bennett Valley Vision and uh, less participation, but now that you know, hopefully we can uh, look to some extra volunteers out there. So thanks again for participating and let's go ahead and move on with the remainder of the presentation. And so what we would like to do in this next section is look at the current council policy in relation to the request. Um, this policy is a small policy and was recently updated in the year 2000. So it's been a while. Next slide, please. Uh, so just basic going over the objectives and the policy, it is a very small policy. Um, the, the objectives uh, for renaming are to the, that the name enhances the city's value and heritage and is compatible with community interest, that it's easy to identify a park by geographic location or function, and of course, to encourage land and monetary donations and provide recognition. And just a reminder that Creekside currently is named on that middle, is meeting, meeting that middle objective uh, by geographic location. Next slide, please. And so here's just some, some some of the basics of the policy, uh, parks are to be essentially named immediately. Uh, they cannot be named after a living person and parks are allowed to be named in honor of a deceased person who has made major contributions to community, country, or field of recreation and parks. Site appropriate historical names can be used and themes may be considered if the facility bears the name of the theme and uh, generally memorials are not uh, permitted per this policy. Next slide, please. So when we compare the request, one of the um, procedures is to look at if the request meets either one of these two objectives. And uh, the first one is a park or recreation facility name may be changed if the following conditions are met. There's an occurrence of national or local significance there's a waiting period of no less than two years between the event and the actual naming of the park, or if the name becomes appropriate, in, inappropriate. <laughs> and, and, for, and for us, we're really looking at option A tonight since the name is still appropriate for Creekside, uh, for Creekside Park. Next slide, please. So um, we are looking at option A, as I mentioned, occurrence of uh, national or local uh, significance. Um, we've heard from Mr. Birding, and so we want to look at what we've been able to collect here from, um, from him and his family, as well as things that staff have been able to recognize. Um, the Bennett Valley Vision, according to their site, is an all-volunteer group focusing on making Bennett Valley an even nicer place to live, founded in 2005. Uh, they have adopted Creekside Park, Ulupa Sidewalks, Summerfield Islands and Sidewalk Areas, Arroyo, Sierra Creek, Bethard's and Bethard's Road to keep clean and maintain. They hold two annual cleaning cleanup days, as I mentioned previously. In 2007, Bennett Valley Vision received the City of Santa Rosa Merit Award for Neighborhood Enrichment. Uh, and since 1978, the Santa Rosa City Council has presented merit award to individuals, organizations, and businesses who volunteer their time and energies to serve the community and improve the quality of life in Santa Rosa. Beyond Bennett Valley's vision, biannual workday, Mary and Bill Traverso mowed annual grass, removed blackberries, and maintained bird boxes. And as we mentioned, they lived a few parcels down. Uh, Mary's also known for her uh, for the family market, a small business that was part of the community for 80 years from 1932 to 2012. And as you saw when uh, Mr. Burring was giving us a presentation, there is a bench located at the open space 
uh, with a donation in her name, with a uh, donation plaque in her name. Next slide, please. Um, so uh, in, in simple terms, staff find, find that Mary M. Traverso was active in the community. She inspired volunteerism. She is well loved by her family and known in the community for Traverso's market. Uh, the questions that we're going to talk about in the next poll are uh, related to looking at the policy in relation to this. Does the uh, civic contributions of Miriam Traverso uh, qualify for an event of national or local his, uh, significance? Um, obviously, the, um, it has been two years since the event uh, uh, for the naming, uh, renaming to Mary M. Traverso Open Space. Um, prior to going into the poll to ask you specifically questions about your, um, your preferences for changing the name, we wanted to be able to open it up for question and answers at this point so that if there's something pending before we get to uh, hearing from your, uh, from your opinions, we can at least um, answer some of those questions. So Madam Host, will you please facilitate question and answer and public input? Yes, um, I will. Um, um, I people are raising already raising their hands, so that's good. Um, if you're joining by phone, you'll need to dial star nine to raise your hand. Host Nichols will then call on those who have raised their hands. Um, Host Nichols will unmute your microphone for your comment, and then we'll mute you once you have finished speaking. A courtesy timer will appear while you ask your question or make your comment. The facilitator, presenter, or host will respond to each question or comment as it is raised. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based upon the response you received. Um, I am going, it'll take give me just a moment. I have to um, get the courtesy timer up um, and get the slideshow down. Okay, the, the timer is up. Um, Host Nichols, can you call on the first um, first question? Actually, I think my permissions need to be enabled. I'm not able to lower hands at this point. Okay, hold on just a moment. Okay, you should be able to now. Okay, very good. We have three hands up currently. Um, we'll start with Susan. Susan, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please unmute your microphone. I'll lower your hand and you may provide your comment or question. Are you able to see the courtesy timer? Uh, yes, we did. Thank you. But we Pl don't see it now, but anyway, that's okay. Oh, now we see it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. So okay. my husband has a, has a question. Hi, this is Gerald. We live just a few doors down from Creekside and love it very much. Uh, my question is simply, is there any uh, further development intended or envisioned for this park uh, other than the plaque and the bench and maybe a picnic table? Uh, anything else, public restrooms or anything like that that would uh, change the park? Uh, 
Thank, thank you for that question. I, I can respond to that right now and let you know that we have not received any requests for additional improvements at the park and, and the city itself does not have any uh, plans to provide any additional improvements to the park at this time. And, and also being that it's an open space, it would uh, lend itself and we typically are, are looking at a very reduced amount of improvements in there. So maybe a picnic table, but right now there's no, there's no plans for any additional improvements. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And now we will hear from Steve. Steve, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please Great, unmute. Thank you, thank Please. you very much. Um, I'm Steve Sharp, I live on Creekside, right next to Bill and Mary for the last 20 years. Um, and uh, participant in Benna Valley Vision. I think this is a great honor to Mary. Um, we, my dog and I and my wife visit the park every single day. Um, so I think it's a wonderful thing. My question is, what, what would be the name of the park? Is it Mary Traverso Park or is it Mary Produce Traverso Open Space Park? Oh, thank you, that's a great question. It would be Miriam Traverso Open Space Park. So that would be the new name of it. Great, I don't have any other comments or questions, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll go to Patty. Patty, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please unmute your microphone. Are you able to see the timer? Yes, I am. Thank you. Please ask your question. Actually, I don't have a question. I just have a public comment, if I may. Um, I've known Mary for 33 years. She was a very dear friend of mine. When we met our daughters, Alexis and Megan, we're in preschool together in Bennett Valley. So I used to live near Mary and Bill Traverso. I now live in the Northeast quadrant, but I was very, I'm, I am very um, familiar with the open space because I had two dear friends who lived within three houses of um, this open space. Um, Mary loved family, community and the outdoors. And being a dear friend of mine for 33 years, we sure did our share of walking and hiking in the outdoors. And Mary never ceased to amaze me about her active role in preserving and conserving the beauty and the, the flowers and, and the open space, as we all know. She was a very altruistic but humble person. She was a lovely person. And I have a little bit of a anecdote to share about her while she was working uh, there in um, the median. It was one of the medians. I think it was the Bathards median. And um, she was working with a project manager from the city of Santa Rosa, who happens to be a good friend of mine. And he called me one day and he said, Patty, you know Mary Traverso, don't you? She's a good friend of yours, right? And I said, she's really a good friend of mine. I love that gal. And I said, what's she up to now? And he says, well, I just want you to know, she is a real firecracker. <laughs> she is super determined to get this and that and this and that. And she doesn't hesitate to call me at the city and ask me to show up with, uh, with men or posts or whatever that she needs. And um, he said, I, I really appreciate her doing all this and she's really keeping me on my toes. <laughs> so I thought that was a, a very genuine testament to Mary's um, passion of volunteerism and getting the job done. So I really, um, I really commend Travis Birding for um, submitting this proposal, and I really, um, I really pr uh, support it. And uh, thank you very much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much for sharing your. Your comment. Do we have any other questions or comments? Yes, we have one more speaker, Geraldine. Geraldine, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please unmute your microphone. And can, are you able to see the timer? Yes. Thank you. You may ask your question or provide your comment now. Okay, mine is a comment. Um, we've lived across the street from the area for 45 years. And um, our son was the first person to work on improving the park. Um, it was quite an event to get, to get it to be a park. Um, 
it took many years to get the city to take it from the contractor as an unbuildable lot or three unbuildable lots. So anyway, um, he as an Eagle project did the first improvement, but then it was not well kept up by the city. And so Mary and Pat were the guiding forces that for the um, development of the Bennett Valley vision. And my husband and I have participated in almost every one of the Bennett Valley work days, Bennett Valley vision work days since it started. And um, Mary was always there. And even when she was not well, she came out and helped us a bit. And um, I really think it's a, a good choice to name it for her. Um, I'm not sure about the middle initial part, but other than that, um, I believe it's a, a good a good idea to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. I appreciate that. Are there any other questions or comments that you see? I see no additional hands at this time. Okay, and I know that there was a written question. Um, have you ever renamed any other parks before or is this the first time? And so at the city, uh, we have renamed other parks. Uh, the ones that are coming to mind offhand, we, we have Dutch Floor Park, which is in the Northeast Quadrant. It's a neighborhood park named after a uh, police officer. Uh, and it was originally named Sunburst Park. Uh, and so in the time that the staff you see here before you, uh, none of us have been involved in a name changing process. We've been involved in naming parks, but um, uh, this is the first one for the staff you see here before you, uh, but certainly not the first one uh, at the city. So hopefully that helps answer some of those questions. I appreciate all of that input and, and your questions. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start the next uh, polling uh, about your direct input about the about the renaming. So uh, we'll walk through that. Madam Host, can you uh, discuss how to participate in the polling again? Yes, thank you, Madam Facilitator. Um, all poll questions are single or multiple choice. If they're multiple choice, it will indicate that um, in parentheses. If you are completing the poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you can answer the second question. You must answer all questions in order to submit your responses. If you are participating in the meeting via a landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. However, the poll will be available via the project website for two weeks after the meeting. Um, check out the website um, after month. Monday the 9th um, to do so. Uh, once everyone has completed the poll and it has been closed, the results will appear immediately and the facilitator will walk through the results. With that, I will launch the poll. Okay, thank you so much, Madam Host. So uh, question one, uh, everything that you see in parentheses with these questions is something we've pulled directly from the policy to help guide us with some of your answers. So are the contributions and occurrence of or event of national or local uh, significance? And two, um, does the name changing enhance the city's values and heritage? And three, is the name change compatible with the community interest? And of course, four, are you in favor of changing the name? Give that a minute or two uh, and we will give you time. We have time, there's no rush, but um, take a look and see how many folks have participated in just a minute.
Madam Host, how is the polling going? Or uh, how do we need a little bit more time? We're at 25 of 31 um, attendees. Great. Responding. Thank you so much. We'll um, wait another minute or so and check back. stable at 25. All right. Thank you so much. Let's look at the results. Okay. So for question one, 84% um, yes for um, the name, the civic contributions being an occurrence of national or local significance. And for question two, another 84% for the name changing, enhancing the city's values and heritage. And number three, um, is the name change compatible with community interest, 92%. And 92% are in favor of uh, changing the Creekside Open Space Park name to Mary M. Traverso Open Space. Uh, thank you so much for participating in the poll and providing your input. Uh, we have a little bit more to go. We also wanted to, uh, I'll say, sneak in some questions for you about the policy in general. We could go back to the presentation. So um, one of the things we discovered as the staff are looking through the policy is that it, it is in need. Uh, we are searching for some updates to this policy to help guide staff and provide a little bit more guidance for citizens as well as council and board members as we look at the policy. So uh, we recognize that after this request came in that we should hold um, and not accept any more renaming requests or not move forward with any more renaming requests until we can get some feedback from the community about the policy itself. And so the city we uh, staff will be launching a much larger uh, community-wide uh, uh, meetings and uh, collecting feedback uh, from the community about the policy and how we can make sure that it's serving um, the interests of the community and giving us uh, some additional guidance that uh, we feel as staff that we would we would definitely like to have. And I, I, I know that looking at it from a citizen's point of view as well, it's um, a little bit vague and can use some updating. So with that, we wanted to um, ask you some questions. And uh, next slide, please. And so, you know, one of the things that we talked to, uh, what we're looking at with the current policy uh, brought us to some of these questions. Um, what are the basic requirements for requesting a park name? What should be submitted to the city? What sort of information should be part of that submittal? Um, how frequently can a park's name be changed? For instance, uh, it looks like we're going to go ahead and move forward with this name change. Um, two weeks from now, somebody else could request a different name uh, for the park. So we want to know from the community, is that acceptable? Or should we be looking at um, holding on, on name changes for a while? Um, also, in some of our parks, in this park in particular, there is no signage. But in other parks where we have signage, um, in order to change out the signage and bring it up to current codes is, is really costly. At a minimum, it's $20,000 per sign to bring it up to current codes. Um, so it can, get, it can get pricey. And so uh, we asked the question, who should bear the cost associated with that? Um, and we also asked the question, how much community support do we need to rename a park? How much should it be? Should it be 50%, 80%, 20%? Um, we, so we're really looking for some more information here. Um, a question came up about how are individual organization or businesses service contributions measured um, uh, so that it's a little less subjective and a little bit more um, directive to staff and to citizens using it and how we should be uh, looking at um, submittals coming towards us. Um, and how would we measure an event of local or national significance? Um, is it just community polling or is there something else that we should be looking at? Um, we also asked the question, can a park be named after a for-profit business or a nonprofit business? So 
uh, we were looking at all these things and recognized that um, the policy could uh, could use an update. We also did research on other agencies throughout the state that have uh, naming policies, and there's there's a lot more information in them. Obviously, staff in those agencies have discovered something similar that they'd like more guidance. And so um, I hope you can bear with us. We have just one more small poll. Uh, where we want to ask you some questions about what you think this policy policy should should be about, um, and then we will wrap it up. So with that, I'm hoping that uh, we can ask our uh, host to conduct the next poll, please. Okay, last time for my spiel about how to take the poll. All questions are single or multiple choice. Um, there's a lot of multiple choice questions um, on this poll. So um, in parentheses at the end of each question, it tells you if it's gonna be a multiple choice and you can select as many choices as you need or would like. You must answer all the questions in order to submit your responses. Uh, the submit button is at the bottom of your screen. If you are completing the poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you can answer the second question. If you're participating in the meeting via a landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time, but you can visit the website and um, participate in the poll um, starting Monday. Once everyone has completed the poll and it has been closed, the results will appear immediately and Jen will walk you through um, the responses. So with that, I am going to launch the last poll. Thank you, Madam Host. So again, uh, as um, Emily mentioned, there are quite a few multiple choice and I'm thanking you in advance for rolling through this, um, um, these questions. And I'm gonna try not to speak during this so you can read them and participate. And thank you for that, I appreciate it. Madam Host, how is the polling going? We're at um, 13 of 29, so we need some more time. Okay, great. Give that uh, several more minutes. Thank you so much.
checking in with the host. How are we doing on polling? We're pretty stable at 22, 29. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at those results. Okay, thank you so much. So what do you think Santa Rosa's Park should be named after? Uh, there were a lot of requests for outstanding individuals as well as history. Um, let's go to the next one. Should the community be involved in the naming and renaming of parks? Awesome, 100%. Uh, number three. Should an individual group or organization significant service contributions to city, country, or the field of recreation and parks be measured? And it looks like we've got uh, 59 type of service is leading that poll, uh, not too far behind with the number of hours uh, of service, as well as looks pretty close to the how well known the individual is and number of community members impacted. And number four, um, under the current park naming policy procedure next week, someone could rename Creekside Open Space to something different. Um, would you be in favor of a park naming policy that would uh, never allow park name changes unless the name becomes inappropriate? Was the preferred response there followed not too far behind by um, a name change after five years? Um, and then number five, should parks which have been named in honor of individuals be renamed? And it looks like there was a majority of folks with the answer no. Uh, number six, should parks named after people be renamed if the individual's character no longer represents the best interest of the city of Santa Rosa? There was 59% uh, yes. And should a park monument sign be installed as part of the renaming process? Uh, split down the middle there, right exactly at 50%. How should the cost to the change, the change in the name of the park be funded? Uh, not, okay, so let's see, we had funds raised by the Santa Rosa Parks Foundation and requesting party was the primary source um, in that question. And let's see for number nine, our last question, what percent of the community should support the naming uh, or renaming of a park? And it looks like um, we're looking at more than 75% uh, being the highest choice. Uh, next is 25 to 50% with um, just a little bit less looking at 50 to 75%. So. Um, really, really appreciate your participation in the poll and providing us feedback. As I mentioned uh, before, we will be going out with a larger, um, a larger request to receive similar information uh, citywide. And uh, we um, appreciate you being part of this to get us started in answering some of those questions so we can update the policy. Um, so with that, we thought we'd um, roll into a question and answer period so that if there was any other questions that came up uh, before we finalize the meeting, we could uh, try to answer those here for you. So Madam Host, will you facilitate the question and answer uh, period, please? Absolutely. Um, I We'll repeat the instructions I shared earlier in case anyone new has joined or didn't comment before and you want to comment now. Please raise your hands now if you wish to speak. Those joining by phone may dial star nine to raise your hand. Host Nichols will then call on those who have raised their hands. The host will unmute your microphone for your comment and then will mute you once you are finished speaking. A courtesy timer will appear while you ask your question or make your comment. The facilitator, presenter, or host will respond to each question or comment as it is raised. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based upon the response you received. Let me give me just a moment to um, get the timer up.
All right, Host Nichols, are there any public comments? I see no hands raised at this time. Does anyone have a question or comment they'd like to put forth? I see no hands at this time. There is one question that was raised um, in the question and answer feature. Um, will there be an open space sign with the name? I assume if, if the name is changed, will there be a sign installed? Thank you so much for that. And we can answer that now. All of our open space parks uh, do not, none of them have signs or monument signs in them. Uh, current monument signs do require electricity and a variety of, of other updates and are fairly pricey and it would set a new precedent if we did want to put a new sign in here. Uh, but at this time there are um, no intentions to move forward with signing the park. Uh, rather just uh, what will happen is all of our uh, public outreach and media, our website and things like that, all of those places where the park is uh, shown will be changed and updated. It will take some time to get there. We will still have our old media, especially the paper media out there for a while, but um, that will be changed as soon as those opportunities come up. So I hope that answers those questions. And is, uh, meanwhile, were there any additional questions and answers from anybody, Madam Host? Does anyone have any other questions or comments at this time? I see no hands. Thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and continue on with the presentation and we're gonna wrap things up. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Host. Uh, so just looking at our next steps here, um, for those neighbors or community members who weren't able to participate in the polling tonight, it is going to be available at the City of Santa Rosa's project website. Uh, that's the Recreation of Parks website, but uh, you can see the web address there. So it's srcity.org slash park dash projects and you will see the Creekside project up there and you can use that to connect to the poll if you need to uh, if you have neighbors or community members that still need to take the poll um, <clears throat> give us a few give us a few days to get that up there we want to make sure that that's ready to go for you uh, so it should be sometime on Monday that you can look for that um, in addition, so after we've collected all of the information from the from the meeting tonight, as well as any additional polls uh, that we might receive over the next couple weeks, uh, we will be taking those and sharing those and presenting that information to the Board of Community Services meeting, which is scheduled for December 9th uh, at 4 p.m. And it's also a virtual public meeting. And there is also a web address where you can check the agenda um, like many community or review authority uh, board meetings, sometimes things uh, agendas change, uh, but the intention, the intention is to uh, bring this before the Board of Community Services, which is a council appointed, appointed advisory board uh, for a recommendation to approve a council. Um, and once we visited the Board of Community Services and received their feedback, we'll be moving forward to City Council with an approval to change the name from Creekside Open Space to Mary M. Traverso Open Space. Um, and as I mentioned before, we will update the city's uh, media locations where the park, uh, where you could see the park name or where it was listed. Um, Let's see, I just wanna check my notes to make sure I'm talking about everything here and let's go to the next slide. Um, I just wanna thank everybody for participating tonight and attending the meeting and uh, we would love to hear from you and get your feedback uh, about Creekside and if you also have any feedback for us on how we can do things better or differently or any um, information for us about conducting a virtual meeting would be greatly appreciated. Uh, this was our first uh, community-based uh, 
virtual meeting that we're conducting. Uh, and our host, one of our hosts, Emily Ander, is assisting moving this project forward. So uh, her information is there um, and her phone number, 543-3774 uh, for those maybe on phones. Uh, if you have any other additional questions after this meeting is closed, you can certainly check in with Emily. Next slide, please. Madam Facilitator, um, I just want you to know that there is one question about when the park is going to be renamed. So maybe you can talk about, you know, the board meeting will be in December and then we'll be rolling forward to the city council early next year. So. Yes, thank you so much for that question. That's a great question. And yes, we, uh, we do plan to go to the Board of Community Services in uh, December 9th. And so it will take us a month or two to get to council. So probably, uh, looking early spring for the name change uh, uh, of the park. So hopefully that helps. Were there any additional questions out there? There was, but I don't see any hands now. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. So we can move on to the next slide if there's nothing else. And uh, just a huge thank you to everybody and uh, we staff are available. If there's any additional questions, uh, please reach out to your Recreation and Parks Department one way or another. And you saw Emily's contact information as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and end the meeting now. And thank you all very, very much for participating. Good night.